All right, so today we're going to jump into Gala Music. This is one of the projects I think that people have been patiently awaiting after seeing Jason Brink's interview on our show, Tech Path, really diving into the Gala Games ecosystem. And of course, uh, the big kind of reveal was that Gala's music plans may be grander than everything else that they're doing. But we're going to dive in deep. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back in to Metaverse Insider, and you are, of course, going to get a treat today, and that is having Ms. Sarah Buxton on, who's the COO of Gala Games. Great to have you on the show, Sarah. It's lovely to be here, Paul. <laughs> Excellent. All right, first of all, let's get into your background, a little bit about how and what you've been up to, how you came to Gala Games, what's kind of the mission of what you're trying to achieve there? Amazing. Good opening question. Um, let's hope I don't take the whole interview with, with this one. Um, I and, and the people in the Discord, uh, the Gala Games Discord know all about this, but I, I effectively got tricked <laughs> into working uh, for Gala. Gala is, I'm, um, I'm 40 uh, later this year, not many people know that. Um, and Gala is actually my very first employer. So I have always been a gun for hire. I've worked with some of the biggest yeah. brands in the world, some of their secret projects, some of their very successful projects, launching um, products and services um, right across uh, entertainment uh, to start with. But I also uh, spent a lot of time in fintech and blockchain. Um, and mm. Gala is a home for me now. And the reason it's a home for yeah. me is because the reason I never had uh, an employer was because I needed ownership and freedom and they're the two things that blockchain gives you <laughs> so yep. gala is a natural uh, place for me to be and i've been here since well we were definitely sub uh, 20 employees when i when i joined um over a year ago and I, i'm delighted to see the growth that the company uh, has experienced and continues to experience it's it's challenging uh and i know when we had our tiny pre-chat because we didn't really get to do one of those uh we were talking about herding cats and essentially that is my job, uh, Gala, herding, herding the cats, getting everybody uh, with all their energy and enthusiasm facing the same direction and, and following our vision, which is essentially to, to bring uh, the possibilities of blockchain in a far more accessible way to everyone. Um, and the lovely right. Mr. Brink, he just mentioned, uh, said something I thought was quite um, quite just beautifully put um, a few months ago, and it was that um, blockchain elevates gaming and gaming elevates blockchain. And I thought, yeah, you yeah. know what? That, that's exactly right. And if we think games can do that, just imagine what music can do. And sure. there's a lot of more people listen to music than, than play games. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's, a, that's an exciting thing, but that's, you know, that's why I'm here. And, and that's why I'm, I'm planning on not going anywhere. And uh, yeah. we can get into music in a bit. Yeah. So, okay. So we're, we're seeing a lot of movement in the space of the metaverse, kind of the creation of worlds. We've obviously seen a very critical role that music plays and also gaming plays. The interesting thing is that some of these things are starting to intersect, especially around the creativity side around blockchain and just what it kind of opens up in terms of a door to a place that a lot of creators have not entered before. Now you guys, of course, have some pretty impressive creators that have already stepped into the Galaverse and have engaged with you and kind of what the future might be around that. I want to talk about kind of the idea of artist first or consumer first. And I guess the, the point that I look to is when you're building something like a Gala Music, obviously you have to have an ecosystem and a, a roster of artists that kind of comes in. But how are you guys addressing the process of consumption and or use case for Gala Music. Give us kind of the protocols that are in place to help grow Gala in the future. Okay, so there, there's a lot of layers to, to that to dig into. I think the first one is we have to look after artists. That is our, our first and foremost responsibility uh, in the same way as independent game developers, creators, people that wanted to do something different but never could because the industry became in gaming very formulaic. Right. You, know, you followed a pattern, we've all seen it. Music isn't that dissimilar. And the reason we started talking to artists in the first place was at Galaverse. Um, and we, we started realizing that some of their war stories were very reflective of the ones that we, mm -hmm. were, we were tackling head on with gaming. So artists and streaming and, and the, you know, the amount of income artists make up of streaming is, is absolutely no new, new thing to, for me to talk about. Everybody is aware that you know, they get very little for essentially giving an awful lot of you know, their time, talent, uh, creativity. 
And artists during the, the pandemic, of course, have seen a huge um, decrease in the ability to get in front of their fans. You know, things like concerts mm -hmm. and festivals haven't been a thing. So they're looking and they've been looking for, for new um, ways to make revenue um, where they, they may be uh, are still sharing the, the lion's portion of that with these people that have got them on these, these very long, uh, laborious in a lot of instances contracts. So we wanted to start there and say, well, hang on a second, you know, music even today is incredibly restricted, but what does that mean for the future of music? What does that mean for new talent? What does that mean for new artists? What does that mean for anybody that doesn't know somebody already in the industry and therefore can't right. break through? And you saw some of that with, with EDM, you saw some of that with some of uh, the hip hop artists and, and rappers that have come through on things like SoundCloud um, and, and YouTube and, you know, you know, basically, latterly and things like TikTok as well, just trying to break through and break into an industry that is very, very walled. So what if you could use, um, you know, the NFT movement? What if you can use this real and this new sense of community first to give those artists the support they need? Now, that becomes quite exciting. If you can support those artists, the next step in that formula is rewarding the fans for doing so. So as a fan, if you find somebody that you think is going to be the next big thing, you should benefit from that. Not mm. by owning them, though. <laughs> you know, we're not trying to replace one thing with the equivalent of, you know, they, these guys have been in contracts and restrictions for years um, because yep. they thought that that's what they had to do to make it. So we don't want to recreate an old world in the new world. We want to create a different one. So what we're looking at is um, listen to earn which applies a lot for the emerging artists. So when fans come in, they give them their time, they give them their earlobes, uh, they give them the support. And as that artist grows, you know, because they're, they've got a, a sort of an interest in that artist, because they've bought things from that artist, they in turn also benefit and they get the rewards too. So really this is about artist freedom. Um, we were chatting um, with a group. I don't think we've announced that we've signed them yet, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna disclose the name right now. But we were talking with a group, and they were saying the most frustrating. But they're they're a platinum selling artist. Um, the most frustrating thing that they've experienced is they have to cut their, all their songs um, for th to three minutes. They were like, mm. "What if we want to do a six minute song? What if we want to do a twelve yeah. minute song? We're not allowed. We can't. We don't have any creativity left in what we're doing, and we know how it rolls. We know that this is about selling the album and packaging it up in a in a specific sure. way that the market can handle. It would be really lovely if they didn't have to do that anymore, and that the fans can actually experience you know music in a way that probably hasn't been experienced for for a very long time um and that's what we're we're essentially trying to do so set the artists free set their music um free on their terms and then give fans the um the benefit of that as well through these these lovely experiences and and the ability to earn from from their support too yeah i think you hit on a lot of things there that are interesting for what what's evolving especially in blockchain and how we'll see this kind of roll out in the gaming side of things metaverse and how it all plays in. Much of this is similar to what happened in the podcasting industry early on because it was really breaking formats of radio. And podcasts pretty much just reinvented the talk show format. They reinvented storytelling, the long format. Everything was really restructured on the direct RSS functionality of going direct to your fans. The problem was there was no mechanism for monetization. And that's been the reason I think some of podcasting outside of YouTube you know, true creators have not really had a chance to truly make it big time. Obviously, artists who have made names for themselves. But I think blockchain, I think you're right. Blockchain is going to open up a new era of how artists will really kind of leap to the next level. Talk to me. Okay, so when you think about that, all right, artists going to leap to the next level, true fan to artist, uh, direct communication, opportunity for revenue on both sides. It's a win-win kind of thing. How do you see this looking, if you think of it in the, in the very narrow scope of what people understand and uh, use today, whether it's Spotify, Apple Music, you know, the typical vehicle in which you consume music, is that going to change in the metaverse because we're going to see a completely different format or are we going to see a lot of different formats start to rise? Oh, there's so many answers to this question. Um, okay, so first and foremost, uh, I just want to pick up on something you said about podcasts there, because the, the fact of the matter is of all of the money that's being invested in blockchain technology right now, and it's something like 19 billion, 1%, yep. 1 
is entertainment and media. Yep. Over 45% of that, that, that money that's flowing into the technology is finance. Now, yep. there's something fundamentally like wrong with that <laughs> because mm. what we're doing is we're creating, as we did before, the systems and the processes that, you know, consumers, if you want to call them consumers, but I'd rather, you know, fans, supporters, players care about is actually it's games, it's, it's yeah. entertainment, it's fun, it's social, it's all of these things. And we need to lean in and come up with new ways. And that's something that Gala has never shied away from. We, we told in um, you guys in, in Galaverse, you know, $2.2 billion distributed through rewards um, and sort of our no distribution last year. We're, we're going to try and dwarf that this year. Um, and we'll do something similar in, in the listen to earn space in, in terms of, you know, both rewards and distribution, but also the investment that we'll make in music. So I think that's that's a really important note to hit on. Um, the reason Gala Games is in music, and, and I've had this, you know, as soon as you raise your head above the parapet, you, you do get trolled, which is, is great fun. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, well, what do you know about music? And it's, yeah, I know I, I'm a music fan. I understand blockchain. I get and I believe in what a decentralized future can do. And most fundamentally, I've got a huge amount of love and passion and proof behind me when it comes to experience and storytelling. And that's what this is about. So when you think about, let's, let's be honest, and we've got some music and um, industry experts, and music expertise coming into our business. Of course we have, we're not naive and we're certainly not ignorant that we need that, we do. However, the most important people in our company right now are the people that understand crypto, are the people that understand blockchain, are the people that yeah. can design experiences. They're the people that are going to shift and move the dial on this because the music industry has had this dilemma for years and it can't and hasn't fixed it. There is a reason why gaming is worth three times as much as the music industry, but it's not as prolific or ubiquitous. So I think, mm -hmm. you know, what we're trying to do is really challenge the formats um, that exist now, because it's not about taking something that's already um, in market. It's about creating something completely new. And where yeah. we get incredibly excited is, you know, we have players. We have players spending four and a half hours on average on one of our games already. That is a huge share of somebody's eardrums and eyeballs, you know, and, and what could you do with that? So this isn't about music and accompanying a game and, and people not getting paid for that. This is about music that can affect that experience. So it can level you up. It can help you recover quicker. It can make you run faster. It can get your team, a whole team a boost. So you're using music in new and creative ways that haven't been done before. And then you flip that over and you say, well, is this about concerts in the metaverse? Sure, you can do concerts mm. in the metaverse. No, no problem. You know, that's been done and we've seen it and, and Fortnite championed it in their game already. But what does it mean when you've got that interoperability of, you know, the art from that concert, the um, the experience from that, um, you know, metaverse concert to in real life to free um, free concert entry because you've got the NFT. So it's that mm -hmm. uh, really lovely um, sort of blend um, of different genres and you can pull film into that and music videos into that and content ownership of those and, you know, how that might work with a game alongside it or, you know, the uh, sort of the gamification you can put into those formats. And artists are really, really um, curious about this space and, and what they can do. And we've got the, the platform, the ecosystem to support that. So for me, it's less about we're going to be the new streaming service. We've seen from people that have tried to, with some money and some credibility, that have tried to enter that space, and it mm -hmm. hasn't worked. We don't need another streaming service. We've got several. Uh, we need something that you know gives people access to the songs and the tracks and the artists they love in a different way uh, that they benefit, the artist benefits, and actually there's this lovely connectivity across lots of different media formats as a result of that too. Um, and that's yeah. what I think is exciting. And that's what a gaming company can bring to the music industry and people that have built those hour long experiences, hours and hours and hours, rather than you know a specific drop or a piece of art, you know, bringing those communities together, I think is what um, is incredibly exciting about all of this. Well, yeah, because you're, you're dead on, I think, in the sense that we've seen um, almost islands in the stream, so to speak, which still seems and feels isolated when you look at where the actual music is being consumed. I know Spotify has attempted to go this direction with social, 
Apple has tried to do this and failed miserably. Uh, obviously, there's been no gaming platform that has ever made this breach of bringing music into really mainstream interoperability. Obviously, the factor of metaverse changes everything uh, because of the kind of things we'll see in the metaverse from a consumption as aspect. And I guess the, the question to you is, and I, and I would agree, I think for blockchain and how music will be integrated, it definitely has to be a whole new format, much like what we've seen in the transitory side of things around podcasting, kind of the evolution of content creators. But this is going to be interesting to see adoption because, you know, it's the old school and methodology. It took a while to get, you know, Napster off of, you know, the vinyl. It took a while to get MP3s off of, you know, digital and into a streaming model. This has been really about a three decade process. Do you think it's going to move faster in blockchain? So it's starting now, 2022. How quickly do you, do you think we'll see mass adoption for music in the blockchain? I think we are going to be surprised, um, even though I'm anticipating it being faster than we think. So with Play to Earn, uh, the speed that that's taken off and, you know, we've got, and, and Jason talked about it last time he was on the show with you, the amount of AAA games that are coming to the blockchain, the ease right. at which they we're having those conversations now, people are open to it. You know, this time last year, people were terrified. You know, you're you're ruining the integrity of the game. It's it's mm -hmm. friction. It's this. It's that. And now they're saying, actually, no, because this isn't about the blockchain. This is about content ownership and experiences. Mm. And actually, the, right. the fact that you need the blockchain in order to be able to do that, fine. But we're not quoting protocols. We're t we're quoting you know game titles. We're quoting uh, player experiences. We're quoting whatever else it is. It's it's actually not about the protocol at all. So I think music once it finds once it finds its way through this, it will explode. And um, because I think right now people are experimenting and you see it with Snoop all the time. And we're really mm -hmm. supportive of that. We don't want to own, we don't want to restrict that. Like we've, everyone's had enough of that. And us getting involved so that, you know, he can buy his back catalog um, and own the, the stuff that he was doing when at death row. Um, and, and doggy style and all the other things that he's now got his hands on so that he can he's back in control and he can do what he wants as an artist um i think that becomes really exciting and being able to have those conversations with people like snoop where he can say okay well i want to put some stuff up here i want to try this i want to try different price points i want to see what the fans want he jumps into our discord and talks to everyone you know no and like we were you know He's a really famous, very credible artist that's now on a Discord conversation with someone. That right. has never happened before. So I think, you know, breaking down those barriers, why does it have to be a certain way? The world's changed. We're not gated anymore. Like you said, social media has completely changed the landscape. Not always in a great way, but it's one of those things. Change happens and you can either be at the forefront shaping it or you can be behind chasing it. Um, and we always want to be at the forefront, shaping sure. shaping what that looks like. Absolutely. All right. So Snoop, obviously, everybody kind of uh, looks at Snoop as as kind of the metaverse uh, personality, so to speak, right now. That's kind of leading the charge. Do you see a lot more of mainstream artists as well as the indie artists coming into play? Because I've only heard of you know, when I look at Audius, we've had the Audius guys on uh, many times. We've kind of seen their roster of people that are in you know, in music and trying to, to make this somewhat of a quantum leap into blockchain. I, I guess the question will be, you got to get through all the studio connections because the studios themselves are still having, in most cases, a very tethered, you know, contract to many artists. Then you have a layer of new artists that are coming in, coming in and maybe thinking of new distribution models. What is the strategy of Gala on how you guys are going to look at the music industry in being able to entertain and draw those artists into the platform. I feel like you've been listening into some of our phone calls, Paul, to be fair. Ah, um, yes. well, so, <laughs> we, we have a reverse tap a... going on here. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. We've got a we've got a um a strategy that hits those those keynotes. So the first uh, phase of, of what we're doing at Gala Music is all around content. So that is bringing on incredibly notable artists, groups, people that um, fans will know and often adore. That's really important for two reasons. One, we need to legitimize the space so more people come into it. 
Um, I think there's there's a crazy amount of wallets, isn't there? There's like 70, is it 70 million uh, registered blockchain wallets? Um, I think that was uh, end of last year. Yep. So all of those people um, are potential customers, obviously, and supporters. But that's not like that's a tiny fraction of music fans, mm -hmm. tiny, tiny, tiny. So encouraging those people into the space is better for everybody in the space. Growing Web3, growing, you know, the understanding and the acceptance of of this new world that shouldn't be seen as, as scary or, or is male dominated, but um, shouldn't be seen as scary or intimidating and for everyone. And um, so I think those mainstream artists understand that. What's really interesting is Gala's really good at making friends and working in partnership with people because we have this, we don't want your IP. We don't want your exclusivity, maybe for blockchain yeah. so that we've got a story to tell. But certainly if you're making revenue elsewhere, if you've got fans elsewhere, keep being there too. We just need something special and exclusive. And what's being, uh, what's interesting to, to artists with those established fan bases, but with those contractual needs and obligations, is there is a wonderful way of still collaborating and coming together. Um, and that's something that having the gaming business next to us um, and as part of what we do, gives us that freedom and flexibility to work with them in a way that satisfies their, their obligation and their terms of and conditions that they've obviously signed up for, but allows them to experiment and explore and, and open up these new opportunities, which in the future we'll see where they go. You do have artists, some of the really uh, well-known ones who are now in charge of their own destiny. They own their mm -hmm. own rights, uh, they own their own stuff, and, and those guys are inbound frequently um so yeah. our gala music event back in early february that we ran so just over a month ago i think it was um that has created a lot of interest um as you would expect and what's quite nice is that from a from a strategy point of view that early doors content that established artists the names i recognize the people i trust i'm going to go through that journey with you because i understand and i believe in your brand and we'll right. make that as frictionless as possible and we've got lots of um um ux and, and ui sort of cheats in there that allow people to go into this world without feeling like they're having to do that hours worth of investment to understand it and i took my mum through <laughs> setting up a crypto <laughs> um account and wallets uh, when she was playing townstar and it was the most painful experience i've ever had it was infuriating um her trying to you know put in a word document her seed phrase and and wondering if she could just call someone if she lost i mean just a nightmare so just yeah. trying to get that that really easy in then moving uh we've we've started our our node network already so mm -hmm. that ecosystem is we've got that initial uh, what i would call the, the sort of the player knows but the founding base of that of twenty five thousand. so now we've got something to be dangerous with that we can play with that we can test that we can build um, and that'll come online uh, in the fall so that they will then be able to um start listen to earn and from their nfts really uh you know host the content in the in the system all of the things we know it does take as you can imagine there's lots of moving parts to get that ready and to get you know all of the legal obligations ticked um i'm very close to quite a few projects i would never call us a project um, because we're you know we've got lots of things going on we're definitely a business um, and I don't mean any disrespect to calling others a project but they're that they've got a different strategy to us and they're focusing on, yeah. on one thing um, and some of the challenges they face we we definitely have been sharing and, and talking about it there's a lot of um, crossover from what we've done um, to get to where we have in in the industry uh, it's no secret we've quoted that we're investing uh, two billion dollars in, in games this year. I think we've already we've already spent you know 180 of that by the time I'm talking to you um, on games and licenses and supporting developers. Uh, we're going to do something probably not to the same scale um, in music, but you know 50 percent of of that. Um, so then once we move from content, we move to experience, uh, making sure. And you'll know from the conversations you've had with Gala before, utility is hugely important to us. Right. And um, I don't I, I got respect for the PFP projects and, and the drops and and that that world. But I, I do want something deeper for, you know, the things that I'm involved in. And I think, again, the, the utility, the earnings the reward, the interoperability of things, that's really important. So making sure that anything we're putting out on Gala Music now um, does have function and reward later. So you can use it. It will be part of it. It's not something that's just a standalone independent giveaway. If it's on our or, you know, sale, if it's on our platform, it will be part of our ecosystem. 
yeah. then so that's through the summer building those experiences giving people um those those reward um you know some of the rewards obviously through through fan engagement through the artists coming on uh we have got some amazing plans for some of those in terms of, of concerts and things when you've got the nft there's free access for you um and then the the node network will go live and so at yeah. that point that's when we can start with the emerging artists and we'll start onboarding those. We've got a really healthy um, sort of pipeline of those guys right now who will come in and you can almost think of it like a, um, a bit like a Kickstarter model. So we're not going to put restrictions around it, but you just need to prove that there's a fan fit for what you're doing. Yeah, sure, and once there is, sure. you can go, you can go up the, um, you know, up the tiers effectively and, and access more and be able to do bigger drops and offer more things to the audience but you just have to show that the audience wants it um so there is a sort of a, a curation and a proof aspect in that but again it means that we should hopefully discover people that you know would have either had to sign their content and their their talents away for what is it 20 years um, yeah. pl plus a seven um <laughs> or you know not be able to to access it because they can't fund themselves and yeah, even if you think something as basic as if I could earn a dollar a week from 20,000 fans that love me, I can be an artist. Yeah. It's, you know, you why, why, why aren't we doing that? <laughs> like, that just seems yeah. crazy for me. Uh, so let's give <laughs> well, people I think that it, ability. It, yeah. And it also brings forth, you know, just a whole new, um, I think, scale of, of how artists are actually going to earn money outside just the art itself. There's just going to be so many different functionalities, much like what Jason has uh, referred to in the past, you know, the utility side of it for music among many other creators out there is going to be massive. And I don't know that a lot of people truly understand the scope of what that even looks like today because it's just so new and okay. so many technologies are being implemented to enable these kinds of functionalities from smart contracts to different types of you know blockchain components as well as the marketing components within social at some point, which will play a big role into this. Even to the point, I think if you look at what Twitter is doing, which I, I still wonder if whether or not we'll see more and more innovation from social in music, because Twitter obviously have integrated NFT integration directly into the profile. I and I anticipate they're going to take that further with more innovation around that. I could imagine your favorite track could be easily integrated, all of this into kind of your own personal profile in the future, which is of course going to play into you know what's going to happen. I think in the uh, you know, the potential of the artist. I wanted to get with you on, you mentioned the nodes and the types of nodes that are out there, the player node, music node, fan nodes. What's the difference between those? I mean, I think I know, but I want to make sure I understand it completely. All good. So the player nodes are the foundation of the system. So the player nodes are sort of central to everything. Uh, we sold player nodes out um, probably a week or so ago, I think now, um, and there won't be any more for a little while because we, we mm -hmm. want to work with, with what we've got. Fan nodes are slightly different. So fan nodes are attached to a specific artist and they are limited in supply. They're a one-time only thing. And that artist mm -hmm. needs to be prolific enough and have a big enough fan base to, to justify that. Um, and the, the distribution of content across those two is slightly different. So the, um, from an artist's point of view, you're rewarded um, you know, greatly for, for having that, that fan node if you're at the level where we feel the ecosystem can, can sustain it in you. But you have to share more of the, um, the, right, the, the, sort of the earnings from the plays uh, with that fan base. Um, so the the, fa um, the fan nodes have greater distribution of specific artist content rather than the player nodes, which have access to everything across um, the ecosystem. Yeah. So yeah. you can think of it like, um, you know, that that's your super fan, basically. Your fan node is your super fan. Um, and that's why they're limited in number. It won't, it certainly won't be for every artist, but some of the more... Um, prolific um, artists that have huge amounts of content and huge followers might need additional support and fan nodes work really well for that. And it gives those, those super fans experiences to things with that artist that the player nodes uh, won't necessarily get, although they obviously benefit from the system as a whole anyway. So that, yeah. that's sort of the, the deal between the, the difference between the two of them. Cool. Now, we're getting into the monetary side of things, so I had a lot of questions for you around this. Uh, one, 
in reference to, of, you know, let's say that uh, node owner, we've talked to and looked at Gala nodes before, how long does it take for a break even to occur? I wanted to kind of find out about that. On fans that don't own an NFT or a node, will they only be able to earn rewards when they listen to music from emerging artists? How would that play into it, especially around like, you know, new artists, things of that nature? Can you kind of go into that side of things from the node aspect? Yeah, so I wouldn't want to talk about um, sort of what is effectively return on investment for for a node because it depends how active you are. You you have to be contributing to the system to be rewarded by the system. So it's not like you mm. can just buy a node and and, and benefit and, and make passive sure. income. That that's not what they're for. So it really depends on how engaged you are, how many NFTs you've got, um, you know, the volume that's going across the platform. So there's lots of variables there. I think over the next. I want to say 48 hours, there's um, a bit more information being released um, from mm. the guys that have been working on the, the tokenomics and economics around okay. uh, the node network and the, and the ecosystem in general, uh, which will be released. Because I think, you know, we've learned a lot of things with uh, through the games uh, side of the business that the music side of the business is going to massively benefit from. One of sure. those things is the flow of information. People really like information, which which is odd. Um, so the, the, I guess the deal is uh, for the early uh, player node purchases, um, they, we, we always make sure that people that have sort of jumped in with knowing very little, you know, having to have a lot of trust and saying, well, I think this is going to be a good thing. And I think based on what I know about these guys that this is worth doing, you know, you know, buying and, and doing and supporting. Um, and that is why our prices never go down. They always mm -hmm. go up. So when the player nodes come back on for the next sort of wave uh, a little bit later on, they will not be the same price. They will be more expensive gotcha. because the information I'm talking about would have been released. You can see much more clearly, okay, this is the trajectory. This is how I earn. This is what this means. Um, this is how the NFTs work with nodes. And we've got some really lovely, um, we've got some really lovely methods around how NFTs work alongside those nodes. So if you don't own a node, but you own an NFT, how you start accessing uh, listen to earn and how you start accessing rewards from those NFTs based on that node network. So there's a really, I think, inclusive way of approaching this as well. Um, definitely in terms of listen to earn, that is mainly targeted at emerging artists because they're the ones that need the support. Uh, if you think about the established artists and the established bands and they want to do an NFT drop and they decide that that's going to link to exclusive song content, that's going to link to concerts, that's going to link to whatever it is in terms of experience. Clearly, that's going to do incredibly well compared to somebody that nobody's really heard of, but that happens to be incredibly talented. So from mm. our point of view, it's it's really flipping the model around. And uh, I would say actually all the artists we've spoken to now, maybe some of them weren't telling the truth, but I'm sure they were. Um, the biggest thing for them after, you know, getting recognized and rewarded for the work they do Um rather than you know the brand that, that you know people have built them into and, and everybody taking a piece of that uh, they really care about the future of the industry so they really care about these emerging artists and you know a couple of the guys uh, sort of said to me and they're now in their their 40s have sort of said I wish that there was somebody <laughs> when I was 18 19 and I felt like the I'd made it and it was the only way to make it when I signed that contract that there was an alternative for me and I didn't yeah. feel like I had to sign it that's what we need yeah. to do. We need to, yeah, and I we think need an alternative. Definitely on track there. Cause I, I think that happens and there's a lot of industries now that are kind of going in this direction, especially in the creative side. So I would totally agree with that. Talking about uh, creators, when you look at Snoop uh, and kind of just his whole overall, you know, persona, so to speak, I wonder just kind of how does this compare? Like for, for instance, how much volume did uh, Snoop get on the NFT drops that uh, he recently generated? Was it massive? Is that public knowledge? Well, you can see that from looking um, at the site, you know, how many uh, stash boxes we were we were selling. We, we're running experiments with Snoop and we're, we're not shying away from those experiments. I think yeah. it's actually it's, it's fascinating and people will benefit because we're in experimental phase. So people are gonna pick up things that, 
uh, maybe they couldn't normally because we're we're testing, um, you know, yeah. we're testing price points and, and stuff. So we did uh, a, a limited quantity of, of 500 and we, we just wanted to see, you know, and this is some amazing stuff. I mean, Snoop's stuff is, he's just outrageously talented. Um, and we just put a, we put effectively a Dutch auction in place to see, um, you know, where the, where the base would go. And, and that was very much to, to our community. We didn't really advertise that wider because we were curious. Within an hour that had that had gone and they were they were selling for, for significantly more on, on the secondary market. So we um, we know that there's a demand for Snoop. Snoop is quite prolific, um, which is great because I think it's great for the industry. I'm very curious as to what will happen when we bring a couple of the people we're talking to right now. So we've got some genres covered. Uh, so we're, you know, hip hop is, is huge for streaming. And we know that that's, I think, like, it, it's significant. It's like 40% yeah. more than anything else in terms of genre being streamed, if you're going to go into genres. Gala Music, in the same way as Gala Games, is a platform for you to access the stuff you love. That's the point. And we're supporting those people that are building and working and, and sharing this space with us and we're helping them with nft strategies we are not a partner that says have some money and then we disappear and i yeah. think our community is starting to realize just how much work we put in the background with all of our development partners we are there in the trenches doing it with them we are not just funding them and leaving them to it so um a lot of those games teams are incredibly close to us and a lot of the artists are as well you know we talk to Snoop four or five times a week. Um, you know, it, it's constant. Um, and so we're scaling hugely because we know that we, we need to give that kind of attention to people as they come into the space. And and someone like Snoop, you know, he's he's okay with the space. He's, he's yeah. testing, he's playing, he understands it. Imagine if you don't know anything about it. You know, you've mm -hmm. got a really steep learning curve. So for us, we, we talk about... A couple of the guys in the labs team uh, use the, the, um, the saying a lot as well, like how far down the rabbit hole do you want to go? Because you can just put a foot in and it's okay. Yeah. And we'll be there. The one thing we won't do at Gala is we will never do just a standalone thing just because we can. So we won't do a mm. one-off drop that doesn't connect to something else or doesn't give residual value because that's against everything we stand for. And I think in the early days when people are experimenting, particularly in the music space, you know, artists were coming out and they were doing these these drops and it was great. And, and people almost like FOMO'd into them. But then a month later, they're looking at this saying, well, what is it? And what do I get? And, and what do I do? Yeah. And it leaves everybody in a really awkward situation because as a fan, you feel a little bit cheated, even though I, I love you, but ow. And then yeah. what happens is the artist is chasing the floor price. Because I've now exactly. got an yeah. NFT with my face, name, brand on it in the secondary market that's plummeting. Mm -hmm. So now mm -hmm. I'm having to give more stuff, but I felt like I did it already. So it ends yep, up yep. as this really weird race to the bottom. And that's what you have to avoid. And that's why, you know, the economies, this sort of um, sort of self-sustaining ecosystem that music has to be is why it's so important that you need things around it. And it doesn't have to be a streaming platform. And yes, you should absolutely be able to play music and you should be able to earn from from supporting artists, but it has to be something different to what's already out there. Otherwise it's not fun and it's not meaningful and it's not going to create more value. And all of those yeah. things are important. That And I think you hit on something there with, with artists because I, I one thing that I'm concerned, I guess not really concerned about, but I think just from a sense of new artists coming into blockchain in general, they are going to get a chance to see real time because it's such an open system, especially from an NFT standpoint. You just mentioned it when you see stuff going on to the secondary markets whether you see it on OpenSea or other marketplaces out there, that we do start to see a decline in, you know, whatever that might be, whether it's music, uh, you know, some sort of interactive uh, utility aspect of an NFT. If, if artists aren't really paying attention here, because you're right, it's going to require an artist to kind of become very multidimensional rather than what they have been in the past are very focused in on this stuff. So I think it's going to be interesting to see the business models from the artists themselves, there's going to be a whole new crop of artist managers, I think. They're going to have to be because I, I this think, is I think rec you're right. creating. Yeah. It's recreating how an artist would even go to market. You know, So lots of that coming down the, the pipe for sure. All right, let's talk about uh, scaling in the metaverse, what that's going to look like. Obviously, there's multi-metaverses that are being built. We're going to see a lot of cross-partnerships evolve. Uh, land is becoming a thing because obviously we know that we've got to have that in most cases to create these experiences. 
what is the gala strategy to take the music side of things into the overall metaverse market, so to speak? What is that going to look like in, say, a couple of years? So we obviously call it the Galaverse, but yes, the metaverse. Uh, the metaverse is uh, it's a term that I'm I'm struggling with at the minute, and I know a lot of the the guys internally are because it feels a bit contrived. Um, you know, these virtual environments, and and whilst I'm incredibly excited about the experiences and the the sort of the entertainment aspects that we can build in this new world in a decentralized ecosystem. I am a little hesitant to try and just frame it right now because that's what we have a propensity to do. And I think mm -hmm. it's too early. Uh, we are in the explore phase, you know, um, people are trying to work out the best way of bringing these things together. And we've got some, we've clearly got some very clear ideas of what we think uh, will work. You know, bridging and interoperability is a huge part of that. I think walled gardens are a massive mistake. Um, right. It feels like trying to own uh, a, a space uh, and gate people from getting in or more importantly, getting out is not what anybody should be doing, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and I think some of the, the bigger artists we're talking to, you know, they want their own. Um, they want their own thing for their fans. They want their own platform. They want their own environments. And I completely get that. But making sure that that works in conjunction with everything else and that there is that that free flowing of, of content, ideas, creativity across them, I think is incredibly important. I love I love some of the the innovation that's happening in the space. I think you know building your own world in a world and holding in it you know holding a talk in it mm, does that excite me? It's not quite what I had in mind when I thought you know of what the future could be. Um, so I think we we've got an awful lot of work to do there. I think the um, you know Web three the future is about integration. It is about these new sort of creative formats. I think you look at the volume of even NFT sales now, 87 million or whatever it was, um, you know, by February. I mean, it's, yeah. it's insane. People are leaping into this to try and figure out what it's going to be and, and sort of placing their bets, if you like. Um, and then people like us and teams like ours, you know, we're scaling fast. I think we had 16 uh, new people join this week. That's happening week on week on week. Uh, we're trying to do it in the right way. Uh, herding cats. Uh, getting people facing in the same direction and, and running at things. I think more females in the space, I have to say that because, you know, in the gaming industry, I think, uh, you know, less than 25% of, of developers are, are female. I know in our company, I've got 67 kick-ass women, I think, uh, another 12 joining, but we're a 300 strong company. So we're not really changing the ratios. Um, so that would be, that would be good. Bearing in mind, you know, we're a tiny proportion of the people in gaming and probably mm -hmm. I suspect in, in crypto, I don't have the exact number, but we're 50% of the population. And in the in the gaming space, actually 45% of gamers are also female. So I think this idea of making the metaverse and scaling the metaverse um, is bringing in a lot more perspectives and a lot more people um, and making sure that we're investing in these other spaces rather than just, you know, what I would say are the new almost tech companies that are building these lands and, and trying to figure out how to hold parties in them or concerts in them. I want to see something that's a bit more almost like immersive film, immersive games, immersive music. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? And going from one experience into another without feeling any friction at all. And um, because we yeah. shouldn't, you know, from a from experience point of view, we use the example of like Uber. I don't care how my car gets there. I just care that it does, you know? And I think for me as a as a consumer i want to be able to to jump in and have fun and and communicate and play and not feel like someone's always just trying to make money from me and i think mm. that our space now there is that mentality of crypto yes. bros and roy boys and that is actually holding us back that is stopping the scale because you can hop into one of those twitter spaces and often it's not a very pleasant place to be and they're talking about you know uh, you know, they're, they're basically flipping, aren't they? They're trying to speculate, pay for hands, move stuff around quickly, and it's an investment space. And yeah. that, I think, needs to change. This isn't an investment space. It's investing in the space. And they talk about that, but really, that's not what they're doing. They're trying to make money from it. And if you're investing in this space, you're putting $180 million into gaming companies that can build games on the blockchain. That's what you're doing. And that's yeah, investing sure. in the space, you know? 
Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, that kind of commitment is definitely going to start to shift some of the, the tides out there. And again, we are in the early stages. It's just like what happened in the early stages of the internet. We sat, we had the same kind of uh, cult, you know, I, I should say groups that kind of helped grow it to a certain extent. I remember when the internet was essentially being born and it, it, we were trying to rename it to something else besides the internet. Uh, and it, it, seriously, so the point was is that there was just a lot of those kind of factions, so to speak, very tribalism approach toward uh, what was happening. I see that in blockchain today, so it is a common thing. When you look at, um, you know, just a, the potential to integrate Gala Music with other things such as games, maybe games within all blockchain uh, chain out there, um, do you see an API integration appearing at some point to where Gala would become the gateway to music for maybe any blockchain game that wanted music tracks from, you know, 50 or 100 different artists? of being able to kind of siphon in creativity into the blockchain via some sort of gala music integration of some sort. Is that something that's on the roadmap? I Let's put it this way. We would be missing a massive trick if we didn't look at things, some things like that yeah. and others, yeah. um, huge. Because I think that's where, you know, exponential growth is, exponential mm -hmm. access, um, you know, all of those things we were talking about at the beginning about the, the artists being rewarded, fans being rewarded. If you can make sure that that's flowing across the entire ecosystem, why wouldn't you? Um, and everybody mm -hmm. can win from it. I think the other, uh, you know, media formats, videos, I think are really exciting as well um, as a format to look at too. Um, so integrating things within in games and integrating uh, people experiences within those games as well. And almost giving um you know that that sort of control your own story tell you you know tell your own tale type stuff as well so right. where the content creators um as well as the fans actually have influence over what they're seeing and experiencing and and for us that that's certainly something the labs and music teams are are looking at and are really excited about because i think that the technology we've got to support that now is there um and we've got the community there and behind us and our, our community are amazing they they stick yeah. with us. They back us. They they keep us. They keep us on target. Um, they don't like IOUs. They don't like um, you know, mistakes, obviously. <laughs> um, and so I I said to someone the other day in Discord, you know, we don't fail, we learn, and um, we learn yeah. a lot. Um, but you know, learning benefits all of us, right? So as long as we're, at least we're trying, because I think we have to break a few eggs that we have to to make it to make the the omelet, right? So. We have to kind of figure out what we're doing and, and we will always push ourselves. We are a company that we, we didn't start walking and then running. We're just sprinting and we don't even know yeah. where the finish line is and we keep going. And I think we're all motivated to do that because this space moves so fast. And you're talking about when the internet started coming and how it evolved and how it shaped and those early people in the space. And I think we are gonna see a, a similar pattern the, the timeline is incredibly short. If you think about, you know, every day in crypto is like a week, um, you know, that when you think of that P, uh, speed and that pace, um, I think we're going to see something even by the summer and towards the end of the year, we'll mm. look back to, well, are we now March and be like, can you, can you believe it? Um, yeah, the, and we know that for, for our own forward. company. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we've, we've executed a strategy that would normally take people a year. Um, and so our post, uh, you know, our post CSO is like, okay, well, we've done the 12 month strategy in six weeks. Um, yeah. Probably should come up with the next thing now. So, yeah, let's, let's yeah, go to the it's next. It's good. It keeps layer. us out of trouble. Soon it's music on Mars. Yes, I love it. Or maybe, <laughs> you know, I think, you know, if you, you're going to need to get there someday. Uh, all right. So a couple of other things I wanted to touch on before we wrap up here. Uh, artist tokens. So we've seen Audius kind of going in this direction. That is going, probably going to give some new life to emerging artists if they've got enough of a fan base, much like you mentioned. If you could find 20,000 fans paying you a buck a week, you'd be in pretty good shape. What are your thoughts on how artists and if or artist tokens will become a thing? So... <sighs> It really depends on the stability of the economy. I think the more variables you add into it and the more you dilute the offering the, and the more complex yeah. you make it, the more uh, volatile it can be. I mm -hmm. think if you have a really solid tokenomic strategy and you understand how uh, that coin is going to flow and how people are going to get rewarded, including the artists as well, 
um, yes. you can have a very successful, very um, healthy ecosystem that can sustain itself. There is no, um, there's nothing off the table in terms of what we want to explore and, and we're doing it with games as well. Um, and we're, we're learning live and in front of everyone in, in that regard. Um, I think for now, when we launch our Gala Music token, that will be the token. Um, and we will take um, the community through that journey with us if and when we decide to explore artist-specific tokens. There are no plans on the table right now for that because, quite frankly, at the moment, we don't need it. We can see the numbers. We can see the rewards. We can see the upside for the artists. And artists are going to get, they're going to earn so much more money than they earn now. And the fans are going to benefit from that too. So from our yeah. point of view, we, we're never scared to, to do that. And you, you've seen, um, you know, some of the launches we've done and some of the, you know, and, and, and coins are nothing new to to us in the gaming industry, you know, coins have been around forever. You know, they're like your your gems and your treasure chests and your, you know, all of your collectibles and games. That that's something that we're really super comfortable with. I think for me personally, and this is a uh, you know an argument I have with people internally. Um, if I go into a department store and I want to pay, I don't want to pay in one format for one brand that I've bought, another format for another brand I've bought, and another format for another mm -hmm. brand I've bought. That sure. is a really crappy experience for me. And then I've got to maintain three different um, token values all at the same time. So yeah. for us, it's, you know, we'll go out the gate. We will have Garland, the Garland Music token. We are very, very happy with where we've got to with that and the, the modeling around that and, and the, you know, the economists and the various other people that have lent in um, to make sure that we've got something really robust. Once we unleash that to the world and we're very happy with that it's sustainable and doing what it should be, then we can have other conversations. But right now, we, we need to be focused on making sure what we've got is the best that it can be. Um, and, and really, I think, we're, I think we're revolutionizing enough things at once for a little minute um and so whether we come back to it later is, yeah is, why know, would we'll you keep that okay open. so so the question would be why why have the gala music token yeah you know, i mean if you have a you know you've got the the gala token what's the purpose of the gala music token would it be i guess is it going to have some new functionality within it new utility that essentially is going to isolate because you mentioned not wanting to use multi tokens in uh different kinds of exchanges yeah, so we, as you as you know, we have, um, and our founders' nodes will always be, um, they're our founders' nodes, so they're always going to be looked after because they're the founders of the entire ecosystem, not not just Gala Games. Mm -hmm. um, but we want to do different things with music, uh, with the listen to earn versus, you know, some of the game elements and the earnings in games. So we do need to make sure that the music offering and the game offering, that there are different ways um, of earning there. So we, it's gonna get quite complicated um, from a management point of view and an economy point of view. We don't want to restrict any of our games because of what we're doing over in music. So that's why we need, right. these are two different instances, even though they obviously coalesce in the same ecosystem effectively. Sure. But that's the use case for that. So in my awful <laughs> analogy of department stores, Games is a different shop, like it, it's a gotcha. you know, and there's a lot of cross pollination between the two. But essentially, they are taking different things, and, and you're getting rewarded uh, for different things as well. Cool. All right. So, last couple of questions. Uh, Gala Music in iOS or Android as an app. Uh, any future for that? I hope there will be a future um, for, you know, mobile integrations and stuff is obviously incredibly important because of how people consume. Um, web browser stuff is obviously much easier for us to, to start with because of those TOS um, terms of service that, that, you know, have bitten developers in the, in the backside for, for years um, and, have, you know, are doing the same. For artists right now, I don't think uh, people that have got their own music offerings are going to be particularly um, supportive. Um, however, mm -hmm. uh, it is something we will be looking at because I think growth in the ecosystem, particularly as we're not trying to be another one of, insert the word here, we're trying to do sure. something new. Um, you know, that that's something we will get to. I think at the moment, our focus is very much on giving people access to the music um, that they can earn from, giving them access to the artists, giving artists access to the blockchain so that they're in control and they can mint 
and um, you know create those um, wonderful content moments direct on blockchain via NFTs. So I think for yeah. us, we've got that's our starting point, and then our roadmap further out uh, will be a little bit more um, TBD, just because we want the freedom to move, and I don't want to start making commitments, you know, eight weeks in that then we hear in eight months time when we think actually we've got something that's even better for that. So again, it's a, it's not a, it's not a, I will say never to do, but it's not on the forefront of our mind right now. We've got enough stuff to run at for a little minute. Yeah. All right. Last question. And that is, we've seen the kind of the evolution obviously with iTunes moving into podcasts or kind of launching podcasts. Then you've got Spotify, who I, I never thought they would really go in that direction. They, of course, signed Joe Rogan and many mm -hmm. other podcasters. So we are seeing that creator space kind of open up. What's the plan for podcast moving into, say, a Gallum Music ecosystem? Um, I think before we go down a podcast and that route, um, I think for us, we're looking at music as a format. And then we're probably uh, the next thing that we're diving into, and we've actually already started on and we're, we're scaling the team around that as well is is a film and cool. um, so both um, yeah. animation and, and series and things so for us that's probably in terms of you know verbal format um rather than sung format can i go with that i'm gonna go with that i'm just gonna own it um i think that's probably our, our next stop um <laughs> i don't think um anybody in terms of content ownership um and and sort of having a, a piece of that that makes a lot more sense to us because it connects into experience, it connects into characters, which mm -hmm. you can see like the flexibility you've got of characters. With something like a right. podcast, um, that's that, you know, that's that person's content. So it becomes more complicated in terms of, you sure. know, having some sort of ownership or earning from that is is a bit different. So I think it's it's probably not a format that we're we're gonna leap into this year for, for absolute you know certain because we've got enough on on the boil with with film and, and music and, and games. Yeah. I'm anticipating somebody breaking that out in blockchain, uh, because there's just been so much growth in the sector. You know, we've obviously seen, you know, kind of the scenario that's happened both with the storytelling aspects of it, uh, both from kind of the launch case and then we've seen all the different acquisitions, you know, Gimlet Media Obviously, Amazon bought up a studio. There's been many of those that have kind of gone in that direction. So I don't think it'll be long before we'll see a blockchain contender kind of moving in that space, especially for the creator side, but also from the listener aspect because of the access points that do represent scenarios where listeners don't really get involved that much in, in that side of the space. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. I think you're I think you're right. And one of the formats we're we're looking at connected more to, to TV um, than than music is uh, comedy, for example. Yep. So we think that's oh, that's, a good point. that's an interesting yeah. one. So um that feels like the the sort of the step into that world without actually going into like you're saying, like the sort of podcast um podcast mm -hmm. formats. Um but yep. comedies are a really um we think a really exciting one as well. So Very cool. um, keep your keep your eyes peeled on on that. <laughs> I will. Sarah Buxton, great having you on the show. We definitely want to have you back as you as you once you get M and M signed and you're ready to come on a podcast. You want to bring M and on? Well, you won't want me. Up. You're going to just want. You're just going to want the friends. <laughs> you're going to be like, bring Snoop on, bring X on. You know, whoever it is, you'll be like we anything you need to do anymore, to break here. Honestly. You got you have a megaphone, so just let us know anytime. Hey, this is the place that you're going to catch all of these kind of fun interviews, but also kind of the directive around the visuals and our analysis breakdown of a lot of the projects within blockchain that we do uh, right here on Metaverse Insider. A lot of our sentiment data that we really measure the success and performance of many of these projects, all done right here on this show. Make sure and reach out to us. You can do that on social. It's just me at Paul Barron, and that's very simple. So we'll catch you next time right here on Metaverse Insider.